Hey bunnies and bunny lovers, welcome back to the channel where all things bunny are made possible. Lorelai here, and today I'm going to do an in-depth, very detailed video about everything that you need when you first get a bunny. And actually, I would argue that even if you already have a bunny and you are very experienced, you might wanna watch this video because there are some items that I'm gonna bring up here that you may have not known about that might make your life a little bit easier. So whether you're new to the bunny game or you've had a bunny, I'm gonna talk about all the essentials and especially with the holiday season approaching, this is gonna be very useful in terms of gifting ideas and I'm gonna to try to find links for everything that I'm talking about in this video and they'll be in the description below. Now I did make a video like this previously many, many moons ago when this channel was brand new. It's a little outdated, so I'm really gonna make this the 2022 version. And on top of that, I've made a lot of discoveries over the years that I really wish I could have included back then, so I'm gonna include all that here today. So please subscribe, smash the like button, hit the bell to support us, and let's go ahead and hop right into this video. Now I'm gonna organize and divide everything into categories and subcategories so that it's not too confusing. And what we're gonna begin with is housing, okay? Because this is very, very critical. This is where your rabbit's gonna be living on a day-to-day -day basis. The first thing I recommend every bunny parent to have, whether you have a baby, an adult, a senior, it doesn't matter, is an X-Pen. And an X pen stands for exercise pen. Other names are play pens, puppy pens. The bottom line is some kind of pen. Whether you decide to free roam your bunny down the line or not, it doesn't matter. But especially if you do not plan on free roaming your bunny or your bunny is not house trained yet, an X pen is a beautiful alternative to this. Now, most X pens are about four by four, which is reasonable, not my personal favorite, but reasonable. You can always buy two X pens, create an eight by eight if you want. There's a lot of different shapes and sizes that you can customize with your X pen. There's acrylic paneled X pens, there's clear paneled X pens, different heights, different lengths, etc. I really like some of these clear paneled ones nowadays. I just think they're easier on the eye if you're worried about aesthetics. But just a classic standard metal X pen should be okay. And they usually range, you know, about 30 to $40, incredibly inexpensive. So I can't recommend an X pen more than this. Next, we have bunny proofing. If you're gonna free roam your bunny, which is what I always encourage and recommend, Free roaming your bunny is sort of the pinnacle of bunnyhood, in my opinion. That is where they're gonna be able to live their most fulfilling life in an environment without any restrictions. And if you are going to do that, you are gonna to need to bunny proof properly. Now, I have made many extensive videos on how to bunny proof your home, and I go through all of the items that you should be buying, but I'll give you a helpful guideline. If your bunny loves the baseboards, protect your baseboards. If your bunny loves to chew electrical cords, well, you better protect those electrical cords. My favorite bunny proofing item of all time are these clear plastic corner guards that you can buy at Home Depot for like $3. I mean, they are a lifesaver and they're very discreet and easy to use. I personally also love these like metal chargers, I guess, that they're making now because then I don't have to protect that cord at all. It's just the work is done. Linen can't chew through metal. So that's one of my favorite items of 2022 that I've been dying to share with you guys. Cord protectors. There are a few different kinds, but the main ones that have proven to be the most effective are adhesive cord covers and plastic flex tubing. Next, we have the baby gate. A baby gate is a great essential to have if you're still sort of figuring out 
where you want your bunny to live and you're sort of navigating, okay, do I want them in the kitchen? Do I want them in the living room? Do I just wanna give them free reign of this half of the house but not the other half of the house? Make sure that the baby gate is not made out of wood or plastic. Your bunnies will chew it, I promise. So metal ones are perfect. Make sure that the bars are not big enough for your bunny to escape through or also get caught inside of. I've definitely like DIY'd my own little gate before using metal grids, CNC grids and whatnot and zip tying them together. Okay, and finally with the housing, you wanna make sure that the rabbits have proper flooring. Bunnies do not have padding on the bottom of their paws. This makes them susceptible to blistering, to getting cuts, to slipping and sliding around. So if you have hardwood flooring, maybe an area rug or a mat of some sort, if you already have carpeting, then you're kind of golden in that respect. But if you want to bunny proof your carpet, I still recommend putting another layer on top of that carpet. Okay, we're moving on to food and diet essentials. I'll kind of do a brief synopsis in this video, but I will also link my other videos in the iCard. Bunnies need hay. This is first and foremost. Before any other food, you've got to make sure your bunnies have hay. So if your bunnies are babies, and I'm not talking newborns, because obviously they're gonna be on their mother's milk, but if your you know, bunny is between six weeks till about six months of age, they're gonna need to be on unlimited alfalfa pellets and unlimited alfalfa hay. And the reason being is alfalfa has a lot of calcium in it. It's also a little bit more fatty than the adult diet. So this is what the rabbit needs to grow. If you're dealing with an adult, so six to eight months of age onward, and you get them onto a grass-based hay diet, so this is gonna consist of Timothy hay, orchard grass, oat hay, meadow grass. Any of those are acceptable, as long as there is a high fiber content in the hay. In terms of pellets, pellets are not necessary, but they are supplemental, so they can provide some supplemental nutrients to the bunny that they wouldn't get otherwise. So you wanna make sure that they are Timothy-based pellets made for adults. Now in terms of the amount of pellets to feed, that's really gonna depend on the size and weight of your bunny. Usually it's about you know, half a cup per five pound bunny. You know, some people do quarter cups, some people do a, a tablespoon. Just remember if you overdo it on the pellets, you can cause obesity and you really don't want that. So you, you've got to limit the number of pellets that you do give a day. Veggies are hugely important. Uh, this also kind of depends on the size and weight of your bunny. Some people do a cup, some people do a handful, some people don't even really measure, to be honest. I think after a while it just becomes second nature, but you really wanna make sure that you're giving your, your bunny a variety of greens every day. I'll link a list of rabbit safe veggies down below for you. A few examples are romaine, green leaf, cilantro, parsley. Me personally, I just like to buy a tub of spring mix. It's like the easiest thing. I don't have to wash and shop or meal prep or anything like that. Now when it comes to food, you're gonna need food and water bowls. Super important guys, because otherwise, what are your rabbits gonna eat out of? You're gonna need a nice, heavy, ceramic type of bowl so that your rabbit doesn't tip over the bowl. Anything that's very light and airy is gonna be easy for your rabbits to flip over and pick up with their teeth and it's gonna get really annoying. You're gonna need a nice big bowl for water. Please do not get any water bottles or anything like that. Your rabbit's gonna be at risk of dehydration if they're drinking out of a water bowl, to be honest with you. it's They're not able to consume the water freely and openly the way that they would from a bowl. A bowl is the most natural way for a bunny to consume their water. I love having like a food bowl stand, to be honest. I just think it's really chic and stylish. That's just my personal taste, and I know that it kind of prevents Lennon from flipping over the bowls. Okay, next we have treats. Treats are a rabbit's like, favorite part of their day. It's like the, the one thing that they look forward to aside from being with you, of course. There's all sorts of treats on the market, guys, but I really, really recommend avoiding the junky stuff, okay? You really wanna look at the ingredients. There's a lot of great companies and brands out there that make healthy treats, 
a lot of small companies as well nowadays, a lot of Etsy sellers. So there's so many places to get healthy treats from. You can also bake your own treats. There's a lot of recipes on the internet. The easiest, easiest thing to do is just natural fruit. If you wanna give your bunny a little blueberry, a little bite of a strawberry, a little bite of a banana, they are gonna love you forever. Next, we are moving on to sanitation. All right, guys, bunnies can be litter box trained. It is such a miracle that they can do this because otherwise we'd be picking up after them 24 seven because these guys love to leave their markings everywhere. Now, in order to really litter train your bunny, they've got to be spayed and neutered, okay? That's how they're really going to perfect their litter habits because they're going to be less territorial. So you want to go to the cat section, to be honest with you, for this and just buy a litter box that's big, that's deep, and that your rabbit can do a 360 degree turn inside of. Now, whether you want it to be an open litter box or a closed litter box, that is entirely up to you, and I think it's a matter of, of taste at this point. As long as the litter box has ventilation, your bunny is gonna be okay. So if you are getting a closed litter box, make sure that you're removing the door because you don't want to trap your bunny in there with the odors and the ammonia. You wanna make sure that there's proper airflow. We use a covered litter box and I've been using it for I would say almost Lennon's entire life and she has no issues. Now with that litter box, you're gonna want litter. And just make sure that you are not getting cat litter, guys. The best litter for you to use with bunnies is gonna be paper or wood-based. So I really love using wood pellets because I feel like they really absorb odors and the urine quite well, and it just lasts a little bit longer. We can't forget lining our litter box, of course. These can come in the form of puppy pee pads, fleece, washable cotton pads, or plain old newspaper. You're gonna need non-toxic cleaning supplies for your rabbit sanitation, but not just for them, for your home in general, especially if your bunny is hopping around your home and has free reign of your home, you know, make sure that you're not like putting pine salt on the floors because your bunny is gonna hop on that and then lick themselves. And that's extremely, extremely toxic. So try to go for cleaning products that are pet safe, that don't have any, toxic chemicals. A lot of people like to use just vinegar to clean out their rabbit's litter box or dish soap and water. So there's plenty of ways to keep everything clean and fresh without you know, having to use bleach or things that are really gonna harm your bunny. You're gonna need a broom or a vacuum cleaner. This is absolutely essential for the hay and the fur. During their molting seasons, you are going to find clusters everywhere and then hay is just messy and it's annoying and like i absolutely loathe having to deal with hay but it's just what comes with the territory of having a bunny it doesn't have to be an expensive vacuum i actually got rid of our expensive vacuum because it was just annoying to lug it around everywhere and i traded that in for a nice handheld vacuum and this is just perfect for like touching up you know, every couple days around the litter box, getting into like the nooks and crannies of the room, going over the couch with it, wherever Lennon has been, you're gonna really appreciate a nice handheld vacuum. We also have a robot vacuum that, you know, we use and comes in handy because I don't have to lift a finger, it just does what it does. So there's all sorts of vacuums on the market, but I highly recommend getting one, regardless of the kind of flooring you have, carpeting, hardwoods, you're gonna need a vacuum. Okay, we're moving on to grooming essentials. Okay, the hair buster, I swear by the hair buster, you guys, but you have to take into account that this tool is specific for most rabbits, excluding the really, really furry guys. So I'm talking Angoras, Lionheads, Jersey Woolies. Th those guys are not really gonna benefit much from the hair buster. They're gonna need more extensive grooming due to the nature of their fur. It's different than sort of the normal rabbit fur, which is really thin, silky, and dense. I also like to have just a little mini brush on hand for touch-ups in between grooming sessions. You're also gonna need nail clippers. You can literally get these at the dollar store. They're so cheap and you can find them anywhere, but you need to be able to clip your bunny's nails. I also really recommend a nail file, which most of you probably already have on hand. If you don't, they're so cheap 
but a lot of people don't use this technique and I don't know why, but it's so great after clipping your bunny's nails. You really want to smooth out that blunt tip after you snip off the nail and your rabbits are going to appreciate it. Moving on to health. I really, really recommend a first aid kit. I've made a video or two on first aid kits, so I won't go into all the items that you need for that. But if you buy one, like they literally have pet first aid kits on Amazon that kind of have all the essentials in there and you don't have to do a ton of work because it's already done for you. But outside of the first aid kit, I really recommend kind of creating your own little bunny first aid kit. One of them being having a thermometer on hand all the time. Because if your rabbit is like in a dire situation, you're probably gonna wanna learn how to check their temperature. Laxatone, guys. We just learned about this one recently through our vet. She recommends it during shedding season, and it's basically an oral lubricant that prevents hairballs. You're gonna need a recovery food. So this could consist of critical care, it could consist of other brands. Sherwood has a recovery food. Rabbits have trouble regulating their own temperatures, so you're gonna need a heating pad or a cooling pad. Baby gas drops. Baby gas drops are semethicone, and it's just gonna help your bunny if they do have any gas, and it's gonna help with lubrication, and maybe help you know with some things passing through in the digestive system if your bunny is at a very, very early stage of stomach problems. By the way, guys, I'm not saying you should get these items instead of going to the vet. I just want to make that clear, but what these items can do for you is buy you some time until you get to the vet. Travel essentials. As you guys know, I am the queen of traveling with Lennon. I've mastered the art to a T, so if there's anyone you should be taking advice from with regards to traveling with your bunny, it is from moi. I've even gone on plane rides with her, okay? You want to get a carrier, guys. That is step number one. In order to get your rabbit from point A to point B, they're going to need to be transported in something, right? A lot of people really believe in the hard-sided carriers. They will protect your bunny from hard impacts, especially if they're in a car. A lot of people like soft-sided ones because they have the straps. You can throw that over your shoulder. You can do like a backpack situation. There's all sorts of assortments when it comes to the soft-sided ones. A car seat is also Something you might want to get if you're traveling by car. You might want to get a little pop-up tent if you're traveling with your bunny. I love the pop-up tents, to be honest, or the pop-up pens. They're so lightweight and you can just fold them up, throw them in, in your trunk. You know, they don't take up a lot of space. You can throw them in a suitcase. Some people like strollers. I love a good bunny stroller. Strollers also get a lot of crap from people who, you know, they're like very, very conservative in the bunny community and that's fine. But I think a lot of people don't realize that not everyone has a car. If you live in like New York or some of these very dense cities with great public transportation, in Europe especially, a lot of people use the trains and the buses and whatnot. If you need to get from point A to point B and you don't have a car, a stroller is perfect. The one that I've been plugging on this channel for a really long time, I'll link that in the description below, but you can find them for all sorts of different price ranges everywhere from like $40 to high-end ones that are hundreds of dollars. It kind of just depends on, on what you can afford. All right, now we have toys and enrichment. Bunny toys, what I like about bunny toys is they're kind of easy, to be honest with you. They don't have to be very complicated. Bunnies are very content chewing on like a cardboard box. So you don't have to, you know, dish out hundreds of dollars on bunny toys. But when it comes to bunny toys, they really like a lot of these natural fibers and natural materials, which is great. It's very environmentally friendly. So this can include basket weave, cardboard, natural fibers, wood, hidey houses, tunnels, seagrass mats. Just make sure that the toys you're getting for your bunny don't have any harsh chemicals, coloring, or irritants. And guys, you can also DIY a lot of your own bunny toys. Like I said earlier with the with the bunny treats, there's a lot of great small companies nowadays that make some of the most creative little bunny toys that I've ever seen. So I do really love to support small businesses and I will link them below as well. You know, there's also a lot of like subscription boxes out there nowadays. And it's nice to be able to rotate around the enrichment because bunnies can get bored too. Moving on to vet care. Vet care 
is incredibly important. This is actually research that you should do, I would argue, before you even bring the bunny home. Make sure that you have a place to go in case of an emergency. And I know it's hard because in LA, there's only like two or three that I can think of and they're, they're not close to me and I have to drive quite a bit to get to them, but like at least I know where to go. Once you have a good rabbit savvy vet, you wanna ask that vet, okay, where do I take my bunny after hours when you guys are closed? And that's, I would say, even more important sometimes because I gotta tell you, these bunnies, they love to get sick either in the middle of the night when everything's closed or like on a Sunday, right? I don't know why they do that. It's like they purposely wanna stress us out. But my point is, you gotta know where to go after hours and make sure you have a medical savings fund for your bunny. You guys, I'm telling you right now because medical care is not cheap, it's not. I wish I could tell you that it that it is. Look, at the end of the day, make sure you're putting away, even if it's $20, $30 a month, just in a little piggy bank somewhere. You know, especially like surgeries and stuff, those are so expensive. And I always suggest to try to connect with your local rabbit rescue. And I can't tell you how many times like that saved my life. Just having a community of people that I can call if I need advice or help, or like Lennon's acting weird. A lot of people are always like, oh, it's because you live in LA that you have all these friends with bunnies. And no guys, I had to cultivate that for myself. It's not like you just meet people with bunnies left and right. You have to seek that out for yourself. Even if it's like a Facebook group and, and you're doing it digitally, it's really good just to connect with other bunny parents. Some miscellaneous items that are not 100% necessary, okay? Fleece blankets, these are great for housing, for bedding, to keep your bunny warm, to throw in, in their car seat, in their stroller, on their bed, for them to play with. I feel like fleece blankets are multi-purpose at this point an air purifier they're gonna appreciate it you're gonna appreciate it with hay and dust and fur and and all sorts of things you want to make sure that you're keeping that air circulation nice and clean for both of you lint rollers okay lint rollers are bunny owner's best friend and this falls under miscellaneous too but a good bunny sitter and this is something that you can get through immersing yourself in that bunny community that i'm talking about You'll meet a lot of other people who are well-versed in rabbit care, who may also know professional boarders or professional sitters. Sometimes the rabbit rescues themselves offer boarding. I also recommend a good pet camp so you can monitor your bunny throughout the day, make sure they're not getting into any mischief. And finally, this is what else you need when you bring home a bunny. Patience and love. Those are above everything in my opinion, because where there's a will, there's a way. I know I gave you guys a long list today. You don't have to get all of those things all at the same time, obviously. As long as you have patience and as long as you have love, you can make it work. You can make this work. Okay guys, if I didn't mention what you might think is an essential on this list, that's okay. It's a little subjective, but these are in my opinion what you definitely, definitely need. If I didn't bring it up, it's probably because I don't think it's necessary. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below if I did miss anything, okay? I, I might have. I feel like I really like went into the nitty gritty. Happy holidays this November to my American watchers. We celebrate Thanksgiving, but to everyone else, otherwise we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.